Hey guys, it is Julie here with JT Wealth. In today's video, we are making a correction to our dividend investing series. So let's get into it. All right, guys, welcome back and thank you so much for being here. Like I said, today we have a correction to make in our dividend investing series, and that is regarding a calculation that we've made for the future passive income goal. Now, first of all, I do just want to apologize if I sound a bit nasally. I am fighting off a cold, and right now my right ear is completely plugged, which is very annoying. Now, just as a refresher, this whole dividend investing series, we are taking $50 a week and putting it into our M1 Finance dividend portfolio. So focusing on strong stocks that have a really great dividend history. Now, the point of this is to create a future inflow of passive dividend income. So when we first started the series, we started out with a goal of $2,000 a month in passive income, and we stuck with this for a few episodes. And then come part five, I came across this great calculator that really let us put in a whole bunch of different factors. And when we put all of those in, it actually gave us a much higher annual dividend income. So we boosted it up to $3,000 a month. Now I spent a lot of time preparing all of the numbers for these calculations. I was finding a variation of historical returns on the stock price, looking at all of their dividend yields and averaging those out, and also finding the averages of their dividend growth rate. So I was pretty confident in all of the data that I was putting into this calculator and therefore was confident in the returns it was giving me. Then after one of our series, I had a viewer leave a comment where they were just questioning how much the dividend was growing year over year. And at first I thought, no, it makes sense. All of these are kings and aristocrats, and to be that, they have to increase their dividend every single year. And I'd gotten these annual growth rates for the dividend increases from Seeking Alpha. And you can see here, they have one year growth rates all the way from 2.5 over one year with an average of 6.91 over 10 years. So this is just an example for one of the stocks, but I was taking the lowest, which was typically the one year rate here, trying to be conservative. So for the average expected annual dividend increase, I had 2.83%, which was pretty conservative considering some of those numbers I was seeing. But what this viewer then pointed out is that they thought the calculator was maybe taking this growth rate and applying it in the wrong way. And this really stuck in my mind. And I was laying in bed thinking this over and over, how the calculator was using this rate and if it was correct or not. So I went back to the calculator instructions about this portion of the expected increase per year. And it says you can see in their dividend history that they've increased it by a certain percentage every single year for X amount of years, so that there's a reasonable assumption they'll continue doing that, and that is the metric you can put in there. And so I still felt like I had used that portion of the calculator correctly, and I'd put in a conservative estimate of the actual dividend growth. But then laying in bed late one night, it suddenly dawned on me and I jumped out of bed, I got on my laptop and I ran through the calculations again and saw the calculator was strictly applying that dividend growth rate to the yield. And so by the end of our 24, 25 year projection, our yield was about 10% on our portfolio. So I'm gonna get into the difference here of the dividend rate versus the yield and which the dividend growth rate applies to. But first I just wanna mention a 10% yield Yield isn't impossible. Um, you'll see that a lot more with REITs and those types of investments where you won't see as much uh, actual share growth, but they're paying that really high dividend. However, with our group of funds there, a 10% yield is probably fairly unlikely. But anyways, a dividend rate is how much a company is actually paying you every single year. So if a company is paying you $5 a year, that is their dividend rate. Now, if they increase that year over year, say up to $5.15, that is where that compound annual growth will come in, how much that dividend rate is actually increasing year over year. Now, the dividend yield is that rate in relation to their share price. And of course, if you know anything about shares, you know that their share price does fluctuate often, so that yield can fluctuate as well and isn't really a true indication of how much you're being paid every year. If you had a stock that had $5 dividend rate and the stock was worth $100, 
we have a 5% yield. Now, if they were to increase that dividend rate to $6, you now have a 6% yield. But in another scenario, let's say that $5 dividend stays the same, but your $100 stock now goes down to $90. You now have a 6% yield it doesn't actually mean that you're making more. It just means that the share price is changing. So with our dividend portfolio here, we do expect the dividends to continue to increase over the next 25 years, but we also expect the share price to increase as well. So that dividend yield isn't actually going to change very much. If you look at Coca-Cola's historic dividend amount with their year end yield, you can see that year over year, that dividend amount is increasing, but the year end yield just kind of fluctuates. It is up at 4.85% one year when they only had a 76 cent dividend, but then down to 2.97% at a $1.60 dividend. So you see it can fluctuate and it doesn't just depend on the dividend amount. So with all of that being said, I redid the calculations. I went back and got averages of our entire portfolio of funds now. So I came up with a new dividend yield and our 10 year compound annual growth rate and redid our calculations here. So we have our current balance of $750. Annual contribution at $50 per week is $2,600 a year. I have my average dividend yield of 5.16%, but I took out that annual dividend increase of 2.8 and dropped it down to half a percent. Over 25 years, this keeps our dividend yield well below 6%, so I thought that was much more realistic. Our annual share price appreciation was 7.85, and that is the 10-year average for each of the funds in our portfolio. Now, if we run this again, our expected annual dividend income is back around that $2,000 per month. So my apologies guys there for ever bumping it up to the 3000. I was trusting the calculator based on the information I was putting in and I wasn't considering enough what the calculator was doing with all of that data. But this also made me really curious about what it would take to get to that $3,000 a month. So I ran a couple different scenarios to see what it would take for us to hit that target of $3,000 in passive income. And the first really simple way to achieve this higher goal is to increase your weekly contributions from the $50 per week up to $75 per week. So another $25 a week for a total of 3,900 per year. Now this will get you pretty darn close to that $3,000 a month. We're at 35,340 for annual dividend income. And the amazing thing is that extra $25 a week ends up getting you another $190,000 in your total investment. Now the second simple solution to hitting that $3,000 a month target is simply giving your investment more time. So if we just add on another four years to our total investment time frame and bump it up to 29 years, we get above that $36,000 annual dividend income. For this one, I even decreased that annual dividend amount to 0.25% to keep that yield below five and a half. So that really just shows the power that time and compounding interest has on your money. So the main principles here all remain the same. The goal is still to encourage everyone to invest early and invest often and to create this future nest egg for yourself that you can get that passive income from. And again, my apologies for my oversight with the calculator there. I was putting more trust in the calculator and worrying more on the data that I was putting in instead of focusing on what the calculator was doing with it. So apologies there. I certainly always want to be transparent with you guys. So I wanted to correct this as soon as I found out the error. So I hope this clears it up and helps you see that $3,000 is still certainly possible with a couple tweaks there as well. So that is all for today, guys. Just a quick update on that. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments comments down below. I hope you have a wonderful, safe, and happy Halloween. Thank you for watching and cheers.